Hiya, girls. We are Barney and Lukey, and we are the hot young visionaries behind Truffle Pig Wigs. And this is Cliffhangers, the unofficial, unrequested, and unhinged RuPaul's Drag Race recap show. The views and opinions expressed on Cliffhangers are from a couple of women who just love drag and have zero real business judging it. If you are not a fan of Red Hot Acidic Critique, turn back now. He bings, he bangs, and he most certainly, he bongs. It is Barney, everybody. <laughs> 420 lifestyle. Truly, because I pressed the wrong uh, sound as well. That's yeah. meant to be crowd. So fucking crickets. blazed. It's like <laughs> any button at this point. Uh, she has stuffed more people into her flooded basement than Joseph Fritzel. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lukey Luck. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for noticing my good work over the she years. She is going to hell. Hell in a hot car. Is that what they say? My other one was beep, beep. Is that my messy cross dressy Bessie in a Tessie? <laughs> <laughs> but we don't like to support EM on this pod, do we? EM? Elon Musk. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I thought, uh, Emma. I was, sure, I was like, that. it's actually by Sweetie, but okay. <laughs> um, no, we do not. We are not Elon bros at all. Uh, first of all, I feel like I need to make a formal apology on Why? the pod. Oh. Whilst friend, perhaps enemy now of the pod, you know her, Maggie, was watching the finale, I mistakenly <gasps> sent her a, a gushing screenshot I'd sent to Kylie Sonique Love. And in my mind, I thought I was just being like, oh, my God, I love you so much. But I had actually said, congratulations, you truly deserve it. And then Maggie was like, is that a spoiler? And I shat myself and she was very angry rightfully so so what we've done now is to remedy that she is going to watch the uk season three (laughs) finale before me and then she's going to dm the winner and send me a screenshot whilst i'm watching it it's only fair it's only only fair fair. you've ruined her only source of happiness (sighs) so i'm just yeah i'm just glad that's all cleared up now because that was uh i'm really sorry but i need to make another formal apology too you hit what I need to make a rebuttal, and it's a large rebuttal. <laughs> it is an urban legend <gasps> about the dog in the suitcase. Can, right, can I just say, I worked with this girl, Sophie, very good friend of mine, and unbeknownst to me, a horrid liar. <laughs> she actually said that she found out that the story was an urban legend, and she thought she'd told everyone. I don't work with her anymore, and she said that she told everyone. Like when you get chlamydia, you have to go around yeah. and just contact everybody. <laughs> exactly. Told. I voice noted her being like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" The amount of people that I've told this story, and now sitting up on the pod like a damn fool on the international uh, stage. I just on, and it goes on the interwebs so forever. <laughs> um, and it's an urban legend. I mean, legend has it that she still haunts the Vicky line with that suitcase full of dog, but it's absolute bullshit. Thank God our good darling babe station messaged me and was like, no sis, somebody lied to her several times. Um, and then also if the shame of that wasn't bad enough, then our sweet baby angel, a lot of nerve on which sidebar please go follow a lot of nerve she's such a sick drag queen and we love her and burlesque performer real deep friend of the pod she's just a fantastic artist so a lot of nerve go follow her um but she also publicly messaged me saying no 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 no, baby take this down Um, a call to action. I couldn't. I couldn't. It was already up on the blogs. It was, the blogs were afire with it. I, w- I was livid. I was already shopping for guns in my head. Mm. Someone, someone has to go down for this shit. Like, <laughs> but yeah, completely, completely embarrassed and humiliated uh, on on a on a world stage. But it's actually not true. So I take it all back. Okay, I guess we can forgive you this one time. Yeah. Should we talk about hoopla? Should we talk about your giant hoopla? <laughs> okay. Um, what do you got? It was, well, I mean, first of all... We didn't go. The inse- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, us refusing to sit at home. Um, but, the, I mean, obviously the incessant rush of having to get so many girls shit ready for Hoopla. Uh, that, that, was that was a fun week, wasn't mm. it? Of just being like, I need this. But shout out to our good Judies. So many good Judies up on that world stage. Miss um, Joseph Wilson, who also has just become 
uh, I mean, his work at the moment, he's just become one of the dazed, uh, like sort of like ones to watch, not ones to watch, but um, he's like basically working with dazed for all his videography work. And he does so much sick shit that like highlights people within the queer community. So Joseph Wilson, go hit up that Instagram. Fantastic. Um, But he, yeah, his work at the moment is being like showcased on like another man, just like baby basically being picked out like his newest film um is like on so many platforms just being given so much shine but he danced for wigfield on mm. a saturday night on a saturday night along with obviously our baby georgie b um who else was up there mahatma candy i saw looking resplendent i think just Fre- may just may i think Frida slaves. <laughs> um also was our good good girl grace shush on there as well i hope so just so many little angel faces so many babies um and just fantastic work i really thought that was for me seeing that seeing a little bit of that that was a real highlight um we also did our own show on friday night which was god we got so much preamble this week i know but we really I like it though we really like an olive we've really <laughs> stuffed a lot in this uh past week haven't we mm. we had yeah we had uh, our show at oslo uh and that went actually quite fantastically but now it we've really got did. at least we've got one month off um to... and one of our valued customers minxy the valued one of our beloved customers. <laughs> uh, yep, she is a professional goth, Minxie. Yeah. Invited us down to her Gaga brunch. Oh my Nikki's God, yes. in Shoreditch. Um, she was performing alongside Trolley Dolly and Jess May. And- Dolly Trolley. What did yeah. I say? Trolley Dolly. <laughs> That's actually the pun, honey. Um, yeah. Absolutely. And that was fucking fantastic, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, it was giving you glamour. It was giving you sex. It's all quite Minxie and the sex. It was great. When and he gave us up, burgers as well, which was good because burgers. I had a bit of a bubbly tummy from the night before. You so I thought if, I've, if it's eggs, I'm not sure. Just a real fucking round, well-rounded uh, performance there. We were really getting the fantastic uh, mental core stylings of Minxie mm. and also Dolly Trolley. And just also just made a comedy and the, the body. The body. The body. The pattern on her is absolutely outrageous. <laughs> um, but yeah, Gaga Brunch at Nikki's, I believe every Saturday and then it also goes into 80s Brunch. So if you're around Shoreditch um, and you need something to do and you need to be around a gaggle of screaming queers, then head down to uh, Nikki's because it's fucking great. Is there a uh, collective noun for... The honeys, the drag queens, the dolls, the divas. Um, just like I'm, I imagine a gaggle with a scream. Pretty, yeah, 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 yeah. A <laughs> shriek. <laughs> um, but yeah, should we talk about? Shall we talk about the drags? Well, yes. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> Seven and a half minutes in, I'm like, they, they came here for some reason. <laughs> well, I was going to say it's our last pod until oh, UK, and how excited we are for the UK. It is, and it's you know, a UK ting. Scrub that we bring, bring out the match, the journey again with a mistake. Um, real, real fans know. Uh, but it was so funny because when we first started the pod, it was like maybe we'll just do like the UK, and then people messaged us being like, "Are you going to cover um, Drag Race Ukraine?" Like, and it's just got to the point where it's just like there are so many, and also even UK is coming thick and fast, like. I thought we'd have sort of like three three years off in between mm. each one. And now it's like, oh, just kidding. It's just finished, but you need to... I saw a meme and it was like Silky from the Smackdown, like looking at the the mystery wall. And it mm. was about like eight different drag races that's about to start, like back to back. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's absolutely fucking mental. Um, and I will be watching five to 10% of them. <laughs> so I just ain't got the time, mate. I ain't got the time. All right. Well, with, with that all said and done... For the last time oh. this year. Previously on All Stars. Previously, indeed. Eureka, car, 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 came back. Uh, they gave us the charisma, uniqueness, nerve and talent monologues. Yeah. Uh, and breaking the usual comeback curse, she was the top All Star of the week. Lip syncing against uh, the assassin, the gorgeous uh, Jada Essence Hall, the essence of beauty. Also, I'm crying at the, the comeback curse. Is that when, <laughs> is that when they pull out? And don't let you know. It's just yeah, they the just come on it's your like, back. How, yeah. how the fuck am I supposed to wipe this off? <laughs> um, both JJ and Riki, um, and all the rest of the girls. Basically, everyone chose our Earth Angel Trinity K Bonet to go home because they hate us. Mm, they can't. Did you also it. clock that they played that the chunky one inch heel, and then everyone laughed like it was a highlight. It was like and one of the only things that they played. It was like what? Did you see that they showed um, Trini like getting down low, being talking about? catfish and it just like cuts to the panel and they're just giving just like nothing like that's lies yeah it smells fishy and I send her it. out with grace and dignity not on a lie exactly mr producer behave that's bullshit mm. 
But yes. And then we joined the girls back in the what, the Zivuk room uh, post elimination to count the votes from the black box of doom. Um, hearing them all reminisce about how they left and how it affected like their sense of self and their growth and stuff really was very emotional actually when I rewatched it this morning. I thought, oh, that really hit me. Like hearing like Kylie, uh, Kylie and Raja especially, um, like talk about how like difficult it was because everyone's like oh my god your dreams are made you've been on drag race and it's like, mm. actually no like you can come off and you're like that was the worst fucking decision i ever made well i guess there's very different reasons speak isn't to it? robbie turner because <laughs> with kylie it's more just like the the length of time she's been off the screens and raja's because mm. she was became a hate figure but i think as well like you say like with kylie for example like you come off and it, the the longer that you're off and the longer that the fans don't engage with you and the world of wonder don't engage with you, it makes you feel irrelevant. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So like you can even have a good run on, but that run on the show, but then after you come off, like it depends how you're received after the show as well. Like unless you're someone like Alyssa or Katya and Trixie or whatever that can just like c- keep constant obsession with you. Because it's like, how the fuck are Trixie and Katya? I mean, I'm not saying how the fuck, cause obviously they're incredible, but like they are still the queens that do the Netflix program and stuff. And it's like, they haven't been on for so long. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if you can just stay within like the the vision and like the, the, the zeitgeist, then you're, you're absolutely like made forever. Like Trixie and Katya are never going to go out of style. No, never. Uh, question. How quick will you be snapping up a boob tube that reads from woe is me to wow, it's me. In Diamond <laughs> I mean, immediately if not sooner i mean uh, the, my first thought was that has got lg written all over it and i thought she right now can hear the sounds of her going on aliexpress looking for it mm. it's- uh, yeah i imagine like a yellow boob tube with it in like diamante crystals yeah bible girl you speak to kylie sonique yeah, make yeah, yeah, it happen yeah, yeah. or we just get fucking crazy with a hot glue gun and a we couple start of screen doing, prints um what do they call it bootleg merch yeah <laughs> Maybe that's what our website should be, you know, rather than like drag queen merch, just like yeah. bootleg. And everything's a bit skewish. CEO of branding. Yeah, yeah. Everything's just off by like 10 degrees. Um, I really felt like it was anyone's at this point, though. I was like, fuck. Like, the way that they're kind of, the the way that they're spinning it, I couldn't remember whether they do that every season. But I was looking long and I was like, it wouldn't surprise me if Eureka won. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously it could be Ginger. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but like, it, it really could, at this point, go to anyone, mm. which is scary. I liked when Eureka was like, I'm coming for the crown and not that leather one you're wearing in confessionals, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) Loved how positive TKB's message on the mirror was as well. Because she's obviously leaving with elegance, as always. And we know she is an emo queen. Well, exactly. And I really hate a snarky. They don't happen a lot. But like, I hate a snarky mirror message because it's like... It's your last leave. It's your last leaving a pre- impression, mm. and like to be nasty and bitchy. Like leave the aggression for the saunas where it belongs. You know, <laughs> like don't don't bring it up to the mirror. Um, and when, <laughs> it cracked me up because whenever Raja sings, I'm like, yes, like take us to church, Ms. O'Hara. Like absolutely, like going for it. And then Ginger joins in, and I'm like, okay, bitch, like sh- zip it. This ain't fucking glee, <laughs> short and stout. Like you keep it quiet. Um, and it just like it happened twice in this episode. That I was like, yes, this, the singer, the vocalist. Like shut up. <laughs> um, so. Can I uh, can I give you a little hot hot info, please? Uh, a bad mama jammer. Do you know what it is? I mean, you obviously know what it is. Uh, I know they sort of say it back in the day. Yeah, but well, I just assumed it was kind of like a bad bitch. But I thought it was specifically like um, from the school of sort of the brick house. It was like a she curvaceous a bad mama jammer. Yeah, it was like a curvaceous young woman. Mm. But and she, you know, she, she's got swerves in all the right places. Uh, but I looked it up, and actually, it's just like. It can be a man as well. It can just It's just like a bad bitch in general. Okay. Like so a bad mama jamma is just like someone, not specifically from the South, but I imagine from whence do they hail, it is there. Mm. Um, and if listeners don't know, the reason that uh, a thick lady would be called a brick house is because their a brick house is built from the ground up. Yeah, good foundations. Mm. Good, strong, thick I really like that. Yeah. Um, but, Lukey, you hit that noise because it's a new day. Go, hey! It's a new day in the workroom. <laughs> We're going to have to keep on going with that because I love it and <laughs> I need to carry her yeah. uh, forever. Um, RuPaul could, just couldn't let us leave this season without hitting us one more time in the jugular with that crochet nightmare of a suit. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> I really don't like it, Kath. That outfit was not okay in the group chat. 
just take, I, take I think I've blocked back. it out. It was absolutely disgusting. It was like if they got like a polyester suit and then like did iron on patches of like crochet pattern. It was uh, it was unbelievable. It was disgusting. Not very nice. <laughs> um, but, Tanya Tucker, do you know her? Now, even though I do not know Tanya Tucker, what I am obsessed with is her sitting there in full high whore drag. Oh, well, of course, she's a, a lady of the country. The country singer to Glamopus Pipeline. It is like, is that just like a country thing? It must be. Absolutely fantastic. The only thing I know about Tanya Tucker, I do know Delta Dawn. Delta Dawn. Um, from Friends, unfortunately, very embarrassingly. When's that in it? Like Monica sings it once. I don't know. That's, yeah. But the only other reference that I do know is, um, you know, because I'm a redneck woman. Ain't no oh, I know that from one of our wig broad. videos. Um, it goes. Is that her then? Well, no, it goes. And I know every word to every Tanya Tucker song. I think that might be a lie. <laughs> Let me g- Google the lyrics. Um, I just know her because obviously she was a guest judge on season two for the uh, Disco's Extra Greasy Shortening. Was she? Mm. So this is not her first time? No, on the guest panel. But yeah, I'm not aware of her tunes. No. Fan of the art, fan of the visuals, though. Mm. Love, love to see. Love an older lady with a pink rinse. Oh, yeah. Like Anita's mum. Shout had out of, Sheila. She had sort of like, she had like uh, a lovely balayage run through, like a pink balayage mm. run through. I thought, congrats to you. <laughs> really showing the age. Uh, there's glamour in all ages. Um, Can you imagine if we had to do like an uplifting folk song about <laughs> the United Kingdom? What would you write about? The only thing that I'm proud of for England is pe- the fact that people ignore each other on the tubes in the morning. That mm. you've, you haven't got no peppy steppy people smiling and wanting to talk to you. And the Boots meal deal, which continues to give. It does, it does. Yeah. Those points are fantastic. Um, I guess I would talk about like woodland animals, maybe. I mean, the voles, the, <laughs> the shrews. Vole. Yeah. A classic. Uh, farm, uh, farm animals. Yeah. A classic uh, scone is nice. Yes, yes, yes. Devon cream. Yeah. Um, we've got some nice cold beaches if you like that kind of thing. Which you don't really. No. So, yeah. It's <laughs> so really nothing. It would be real tough, wouldn't it? I. It absolutely, I re- literally thought exactly the same thing when they were like, oh, it is a love letter to the USA. I thought, sure, white supremacist neighbours, crippling healthcare debt, mass shootings, the pillaging of sacred indigenous land. What is not to love? <laughs> Write out a love letter. Honey, like, Although now I'm thinking maybe it would be quite funny to just do a sort of a love ode to like chav culture. Ch- I don't believe we did. I did say inverted, the term. Yeah, inverted okay, fingers, you. but you couldn't see that, listeners. Um, I also chav uh, stands for something. I remember someone told me once, and I was like, "That makes it actually even worse." It's like council house aspo something. It like stands for things. Whoa, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like even more, now. even more offensive than uh, you could even possibly believe. When I think of that, it reminds me of my mum's friend Maria. And when the term first came out, she had only seen it written, and she used to say it. I uh, think it was called shav. <laughs> um, so it's oh my god. It stands for council housed and violent. Whoa. Yeah. Wow. Does that not make uh I can't say that that is it's it's actually very disgusting, isn't it? Um but yeah, I would not I would I would literally be unable to write a love letter to the UK. I'd have to like come up with something mental. Um but I thought this is interesting because they're all vocalists. No. I mean I use the term vocalists. In a drag race structure, sure. Uh, um, but like, these are all people. As, like, uh, aside from Eureka, but I know that Eureka says that she's a, a rapstress. She does. So, like, she these does. are all like performers that like this is it within my wheelhouse that yeah. I'm like gonna. Um, so I thought that this this could be interesting. You could get a really good uh, result from this. I just have a real strong hunch. H- call me hunchback, a yeah, natural. I have not to your face, but. <laughs> Um, I think everything you read on this episode is just based on wanting to wear that goddamn. Ah! I was. It's literally insane. I call bullshit. I mean, you can tell <laughs> that she had that costume and she's like, oh, I missed it on the runway. How can I shoehorn? I'm going to write my rap about. Imagine if she was like, um, so my rap this week is I know it's about the USA, but it's also about someone that does a makeover challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, she thinks she's slick, but we see it. And I fear she may have girl bossed a tad too close to the sun with this one. Because it's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not, we see it. We see each other. Perhaps. Um, I really liked that Raja wasn't afraid to kind of 
like what we were saying, it's like a like address how difficult this challenge is to write an uplifting song about yeah. a country that is a shit yeah, show. Yeah, 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 exactly. Ain't we all, honey? Ain't uh, we all? We're a work in progress. I, it just cracks me up every time, like the way that they edit the show. Um, because obviously they want for for Lady RuPaul Charles to get her moment and also uh, just for the way that the, the drama and theatrics of the show works, that they want serious topics, but it just like glosses over it. So it's like, so I'm I'm discussing reproductive rights. Dum, 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 dum. I'm discussing like <laughs> rape culture. Dum, 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 dum. It's just like there's no time for any of them to talk about it in, like in any meaningful way. But they just like know that they want it for the theatrics yeah. and it just like glosses over it. So like... Um, it also absolutely fucking cracks me up when there's always someone every season that's just like, do you know what? This is going to be really, really tough for me just because I write so much. It's At this point, it's just like pages and pages. Like, very Bendela. Yeah. And oh, just, and they like, both wear the uh, confessional crown as well. There must be a yeah. couple of links there. And also very Alyssa when she's laughing at her own jokes. She's like, oh, I've, just got, <laughs> I've just got so much. I've just... Then we all do do over into dance rehearsals with the one and only Jamal Sims. Sunny Flower is actually... <laughs> I just, actually. I just love him. I just <laughs> love him. Uh, such a sweet angel. And I love how just how everyone goes absolutely fucking crazy when they have yeah. any proximity <laughs> to him. I got sore legs trying to do Raja's like clapping on the legs like... Di-di-di, di-di-di, di-di-di. Step. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Step. Clap. Hit. Down. I was expecting a little toe tapping down the rec centre. You know, sort of very... Uh, middle-aged mum does country but Jamal was on his drumline shit mm. um, it, it, that was they were some like quick movements yeah like, very stylized as well and I thought for non-dancers tough no yeah I, I mean I already felt uh, very nervous for that sounded really cunty like um, for non-dancers <laughs> I can't even imagine what that's like what was it like Luke <laughs> not so. being a natural performer um, I did weirdly still feel anxious about having to do all this like country boot scooting yeah, Eureka yeah, yeah, yeah. was having to do and <gasps> I didn't even have to do it and I, I was know. still scared Kylie has a natural roadhouse back roads cowgirl bitch attitude you heard it now that's first. the stinky tea and that is the stinky tea can you believe what a co- is there a higher compliment than that coming from Jamal Sims I was no. like what a fucking sentence mm, say it again a natural roadhouse back roads cowgirl bitch attitude Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, did you like the bandanaography? I did. I felt very calm watching her because I think and she's just laser focused, isn't mm. she? She didn't seem like overwhelmed. She didn't seem like she was too nervous. She just seemed like, let me get this down so I can fuck this competition up. Can we talk about the main problem here? What? Where was the arch in the back, Ginger Minge? Well. Did she not go to uni? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. That arch was on 1% maximum. Like, <laughs> poor Mr. Minge. Well, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely zero arch scene from her. Um, and I liked a bit when they were like, there's like a part of me that like doesn't see myself as sexy. I was like, the part is us. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say you dance from like here or from here? From, I mean, you remember you're on a podcast. So well, from I'm where just, and where? I'm just quoting Jamal. Oh, from sure. like head or from groin? Um, Definitely from groin. Same. I think all oh, like... It's got to. That's why I can't do foot work because the groin is too strong. Because the puss is taken over. Yeah. The strength of the teeth are just the too, too vulva much. vulva undulation vibes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, but when is someone gonna gonna fuck Jamal Sims? I mean, I don't know whether you'd fuck Jamal. Maybe they're just backstage bumping purses. I don't know. But like, how do you know no one has? Well, exactly. I need to know the backstage of. Are you telling me that they get this amount of hot, hot? Cross dressers in a room, and we shouldn't use cross dressers. I'm I'm a bit you confused. Use cross dressers. I'm a bit confused about the term crossies because obviously we love it, but I'm sure it must be offensive to it me. To me personally, I mean, I have actually no re- no standing no on whether this is correct or not. But I, when I think of cross dresser, I think of it being like a straight cis man who kind of likes to wear a couple of like five dernier like navy tights over the hairy leg yeah with the yeah. hair coming through and just a very kind of a lovely hard mundane front. hard front outfit uh, chin length brown wig with, yeah like with low it's, lights. they aren't trying to be a drag queen they're not trans i just think they're just someone who kind of enjoys dressing well, up in ladies clothes that's why i'm a bit slightly confused. sexual that's why i'm a bit confused about the term cross dresser because for me it's like an extension of like gender fuckery do you know what i mean it's like i'm just crossing like, the boundary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm just like, it, it's it's specifically about clothes. There's no element of, like, gender to it. There's no en- mm. element of, like, sexuality. Like, it's just about, like, I am wearing clothes 
from what might be I thought of as like the other binary. I don't but know, with like, a slight kink to it, a, a slight yeah, a little rush. bit. But I love the term crossy because mm. it is like and 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 I don't, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know. It, it, I'm sure it must be offensive, but also as well, like, is everyone? Well, that's what I think of a transvestite as well. I think that's an outdated term. I but don't that's really what know. I think of a transvestite but then rather I s- than like trans person. Oh yeah, of course. But then I saw someone the other day saying that you cannot. You cannot refer to someone as a transsexual unless they have said that that's okay, that that's a very outdated term. But the lovely Sean what, Faye... What, rather than saying they are trans? Yeah, saying they're transgender, like you would say, like they are... A, uh, oh, the sexual bit is outdated. And I think so. Like to say yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, in the wide world of Twitter, everyone's um, an intellect, aren't they? So oh my God, like, what's that new one? What? The new terminology, because it's like pan, <gasps> but it's deeper oh God, than it pan like if you want to... Um, dobiosexual or something. No, bro. bro abrosexual. Abrosexual. And it means that like one day you may be bisexual, the next day you may be asexual, the day after that maybe you're pan and it like changes. Yeah, it's the, like the fluidity of sexuality is that like you don't just like exist somewhere within all of these sexualities. It's that you like move head on from one sexuality to another. It's like, today I am bisexual. Tomorrow I am pan. The next day I am straight. It's absolutely. Can I do this? I mean, I, feel I can't like remember I who can. posted it. Who posted it? We <laughs> were it cracking Sharon up. LeGrand. Sharon, that was like the next person I hear that says their abrosexual is getting jumped. I'm <laughs> like, just, like, don't call it something with bro in the title. Yeah, That's so confusing. Very, very, very. Like abrosexual. <laughs> um, but yeah, not into it at all, really. Um, but then we move on to the Inside All Stars interview with RuPaul and Michelle. Glad to see that they're not called Tic Tac lunches. No well, more. stop the press. I have something to say. Please. Well, for initially, I thought they, they, initially. they've they been listening to the pod. They've realised that after 10 plus years, maybe we shouldn't be making jokes about eating disorders. Especially when so many queens have come on the show and spoken publicly on his show about their struggles with eating yeah. disorders. <laughs> but then, however, when there's the wide shot, did you see that at the end of the stage, there was a dish of Tic Tacs yeah. just like grabbing that shoot times, like gone but not forgotten. Like, yeah, it's, it's just there an omnipresent you know it's there. threat. Yeah, like, like what? That yeah. was so weird. It's, it's either... Sh- Tic Tac lunch or it ain't. And yeah. if it ain't, what are they doing? It's all very, very strange, but I'm glad that they're not um, so blatantly glamorising. Like, oh, are you going to not eat that one Tic Tac because you've eaten this Well, you know that one year. tiny Tic Tac only contains two calories. It's actually your favourite one calorie snack. Really? Yeah, one calorie. Maybe it's... For maybe for the biggies of the UK, it's two a bit big. Two is hours it... of Tic Tac freshness and just two calories. Maybe they say if you have two. I'm only getting that from Juno with our dear friend Elliot Page in um because the character in Juno is like you can never have enough of your favorite one calorie snack because the guy Michael Sarah is obsessed with Tic Tacs well there you go I feel like I remember it from the this is really actual boring podcast yeah. right now. <laughs> like oh let's talk about Tic Tacs let's move um, on I feel like they've stopped um delving as deep in the trauma factory in these chats now they I feel, feel like a bit lighter hearted lighter harder, lighter, harder. remember that they've already made them sit on a stage and say it to an audience like they've really at this point they've just run out there's no more so. trauma like that's no, like what eggs do you like Who's yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly most importantly michelle looks so beautiful i could have collapsed i i just couldn't i like she looked so gorgeous i was literally googling conversion therapy mm. as we as like she the just glasses like, are fantastic as well. she just the face everything i think she i would not be surprised maybe as she's got older like the fat distribution has changed on her face but i would not be surprised if she's had buckle because the jaw, like some, maybe it's filler, like what she, it just whatever looks, it is, is right. It is she absolutely came motherfucking right. She looks incredible, and I, yeah, I just had a real moment there. I've got another news flash. I'd like to say is it about RuPaul, the known liar? Uh, well, it's yeah to do with well, like later on in the episode when Ginger claims to be one of the biggest stars to ever come out of this competition. I had not noticed before that Rue had said Me that neither. exact Me phrase. To her. We were watching it together and both nearly fell off the chairs about to start researching everyone's Instagram stats. Well, I'm glad you asked. Because, we because did. yeah, <laughs> I, there was a list of queens that are over 2 million followers on Instagram. Your Trixie, Katya, Adore, um, Violet. I think Plastique is in there. I think there's six of them. I can tell you. Somewhere else later in the um, thing. I think there's six <laughs> of them that are over 2 million. And then there was the next section, which was queens that were at 1 million followers. And I counted 40 queens in the 1 million followers section before I gave up because I was so bored. So I was like, okay, so there's nearly, I'm already at nearly 50 queens that are 
And I was like, let me go check how many followers Ginger has. Not that followers equals success, but really in terms of visibility and um, when you're talking about how you're going to sell out a, a one-woman show or whatever. When you're saying one of the biggest stars to come out of a franchise. She is on five... 150,000 which is the same as Eureka and the same as Kylie so it's like you're not even the most famous in this show and you've been on before thrice yeah like it it was just listen I want to uplift and celebrate all of them but it just that that seems part of the ginger ninja gender it just seems fucking mental that they would be like she like that RuPaul would say it to her Mm. But I feel, I don't feel bad for her saying it because if the judge of the program, of the game show you're trying to win tells you something about how well you've done in her show, I would 100% repeat it in front of the room so everybody gets to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm, I would also, I'd get fucking merch with it on. But like. initially when she first said it, we did, we weren't privy to this bit of info. I lost me bloody marbles. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Um, and I was just really surprised that, um, that RuPaul would say that. Mm. It just, I just thought, but again, a known liar. I really felt Ginger was sucking up to her with that AJ and the Queen story. Yeah, it didn't seem really relevant in any way, did no. it? No, I like, mean, you could say, if I'm going to bleed the devil's avocado, please. that maybe Trini did that a bit about her saying guardian angel, but mm. that was actual life or death situation. But like, and I she Trini. doesn't have, she, she doesn't have a large following. Yeah. You don't see her on the tours. She's never on like World of Wonder. She's never on bots. She's never on like any of them. You like, she's just not really that visible. And she's not, you know, like obviously Bob and Eureka and like went on to do that other Netflix program. Mm. Like so many other people are hyper visible from the show. And so I just thought RuPaul, like what? Like why do you as a man lie? Well, why? I think you've answered your own question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a rhetorical question. Uh, why is RuPaul so surprised about the amount of soul Kylie has. Let, like, let the narrative go. Like, oh, she is, is she like a fucking, I don't know, a kissogram you've not booked <laughs> or something? Why is everyone so surprised? Do you know what was absolutely cracking me up so much? It was very from the Michelle Visage School of Conversation. Um, the, she was like talking about being trans and then RuPaul just like basically hijacked the thing. He was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's exactly, yeah, you've got it right. That's exactly how I feel. That's what, that's how all people are. It was a like, human ascended master. Yeah. <laughs> Please, I just wanted me to tell you exactly what that is. Please. Ascended masters in the ascended master teachings of a number of movements in the theosophical, the- sure, the- traditional Ooh. are spiritually enlightened beings who in past incarnations were ordinary humans, but who have gone under, who have undergone a series of spiritual transformations originally called initiations. Like what? Can Who I be real with you? Billionaire bullshit. I was going to say, I hear a lot of bullshit to overthrow the sound of fracking. Like, yeah. remember that all of this fucking um, him astral projecting to a higher frequency and stuff. It's like... He's shifting. He's going to <laughs> be Draco's boyfriend. Like, he... All of this bullshit that he, like, pretends to be so spiritual and so in touch with, um, like, vibrating on a higher plane. Like, you are... The vibrating you can feel is the fracking machines yes. in your garden. Like, like make it make sense. Shaking our earth loose. Yeah. yeah. I mean, sure. Whatever. Um, but... I wish they'd let Michelle talk. She felt like a glorified extra for this. She just at the end was like, yep, yeah, congratulations. It's just like she didn't really get to talk to any of them. Because she's only negative, that's why. They're not allowed to be negative on the last episode. True. She really did, had no words for them. Um, it's a new day in the coronation day. <laughs> <laughs> the dolls re enter the workroom on elimination day. Um, just to have some mirror chats, put some final touches to their look. I like the vibe. Yeah. It seems relaxed. But also, like, still competitive, but just, like, without that, that kind of... That anus. Yeah. Relaxed, yeah, 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 yeah. but uh, still wants to buy Competitive prices. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, just none of that gross, like, tension that everything, like, depends on this and it's too much. Well, I think, actually, you've got to a point now, uh, this is how I felt, where, like, they want it, but it doesn't feel that tense. Do you know, mm. like, remember with Shay that she was like, I have to fucking win this. Like, she had so much to prove. And I just feel like these ones, they all really want it, but it didn't feel like... I don't know. I didn't feel like there were anyone was going to fucking slit each other's throats to get it. No. Which sometimes it does. Um, but it's so nice. I love to see. I noticed two of them using Alyssa's palette, the uh, AVH Alyssa's palette. And really sh- clever. You gift it to all of them before they go on, so everyone sees. Well, you the, using isn't them. the prize ABH? I can't keep up. It's, I think uh, I think Anastasia is the is the sponsor, mm. and you'd win a life uh, lifetime supply of Anastasia. But then it just made me think, like, 
How fucking sick is that? Alyssa has a palette with Anastasia Beverly Hills, which is like, I know obviously they are tied to Drag Race, but just like, I mean, she must have made literal millions from it. Oh, I hope so. No, 100%. Like, it, the palette is like... doing a lovely pink glam. Well, the palette is like £40, and not only do you have the very established um, audience of Anastasia Beverly Hills, so one of the biggest makeup brands in America and Anastasia Beverly Hills. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so many people would buy it anyway. So many just like makeup lovers, but then you've got the whole drag world. Like, it's a drag palette. It's like mm. bright colours. It's got like transition shades, black and white. Like, it's it's essentially made to do a drag eyes. So, I want it. Why haven't I got it? I don't know. But it's like, yeah, 100% she would have made like multi-million pounds on it. But... Ginger Minj, one of the biggest stars, sure. Where, where is your palette? <laughs> where are the jokes? Uh, should we have a cheeky little um, tete-a-tete, yeah. frottage, BRB? Yeah, please. Okay. All we'll right. Back in a sec. See you on the other side, girls. It started in a church hall, and then shit got crazy. Rebel Bingo rose up from the underworld to remind everyone that he's home. Sure, they've been around the block. From Las Vegas to New York, LA, Ibiza, Portsmouth Student Union. But they are back in their spiritual homeland. And because there just ain't nothing like a TP Dubs party, you can now grab £5 tickets for their next events in September and October with the code TRUFFLEPIGS, that's plural, that's TRUFFLEPIGS, for a £5 ticket for the next Rebel Bingo. So go grab them now. It's www.rebelbingo.com. Join the revolution on the 3rd of September and the 2nd of October at Oslo Hackney. The OG intense bingo experience. For the final time this year, please welcome to the stage, all the way from Napoli, Miss Lwyn Gwini! <laughs> you hit that roll, honey. Everyone's favourite... Oh, <laughs> oh, I fumbled the bag, I fumbled the bag. Everyone's favourite deformed star, Miss Ella Van <laughs> Oh, I really fumbled the bag on that one. Listen, a that was a good one, though. A stand up, she ain't. Uh, but I'm really running out of, uh, I'm running out of these uh, drag names. I think and it's the end of the season, then, isn't truly. it? Truly, and I hope we see some. I hope we see from House of Pig, we see some new uh, baby queens pop up that are stealing these names. <laughs> some of them maybe not because they've been incredibly offensive. But um, I'd like to see you out in the clubs, girls. Um, let's talk this runway. Why does None of RuPaul's tights or nude panels ever match his skin tone. Ah, nay. I don't know. I don't. This time at least, she did have like black fishnets on, which could have been making the... No, she didn't. Yes, she did. Big wide ones. Oh, but underneath she had other skin. She had uh, Mm. like her skin tone, her skin tone, I say very loosely, uh, which again did not match her arms or the nude panels on her body. No, I just don't get it, especially when it's on the like the top half of the body with like big old sections yeah. especially when it's zoldy as well like would you not just be like okay this material that we have made in the perfect color will always be your nude panels yeah like, it's the color of your skin yeah it's absolutely bizarre when i first saw it the full ensemble i was like oh but then on closer inspection i was just like i don't like any of it the actually. hair was mental no yeah at first you see legs sparkle blonde big so it's like yeah. you thought it was you i thought it was me <laughs> Um, the hair was absolutely fucking mental I will not stand for it but the runway theme this week all star eleganza extravaganza which is all it always gives Mm. love it Um, should we talk about this is our country let's do it okay do you want to tell me wait I've got to say as well please Michelle looked lovely, but why dress like a Victorian teacher or like the old lady Mm. who lived in a shoe I don't know Okay, I I have no answer for that I was hoping you could tell me on the the grapevine (laughs) it just um that was an odd, but I mean, consecutively, we do often have very, very strange, yeah, very strange looks from Michelle Visage. Little what she gives in the era, yeah, what she gives in the face, she really uh, loses in the in Levitt Um But let's talk. This is our country. Let's talk about the girls. Let's break it down. Um, what do you think of Eureka? 
just thought her verse was so weird. Just like mm. listing queens and then being like, don't do that. Just seems like a very weird road to go down just for an outfit. And it was a little too fast as well. Yeah, she, so f- she didn't have the rhythm. She ain't got the rhythm. She ain't got the diction. Mm. The diction. The Although lips, the I did the the um, think, I think maybe on Kylie's one, it's like they've actually got such a short amount of space yeah. and they all try to fit so much in. They're all really like speaking fast. They have half the amount of time that they had on Read You, Read You, Wrote You. Yeah, think how long they have in American. Mm. Like yeah. a, a full verse and then like a little pre-chorus hook. Yeah. Sorry, uh, just throwing out the musical terms there. Pre-chorus sorry. hook. You Why better. didn't they show us any studio footage, I wonder? Hmm. Maybe it just wasn't that interesting. Probably not. Or maybe they just didn't want to ruin any of the surprise of the track because they want people to buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought Ginger, her voice really lends itself well to this style of track. I thought actually her voice sounded... She's not really like a voice that I would seek out to listen to, but I thought for this country shit, like actually it sounds great. Maybe that's, she should pivot and stop doing her her show tunes and do, mm. do sort of more country. Well, she really sounded like she had turned it up to 12, the well, country I mean, voice. It's, t- it's pretty turnt to begin with. Wait, can I just say a couple more things about Eureka? Please. Uh, first of all, I wish her outfit wasn't a bodysuit with that teeny tiny the stupid shoe. The outfits were very confusing. Like, you, you must have something with a tassel on. If you didn't know that it was going to be either USA or country vibe, I, I know you got something with some fringe on it. Anything that could have there, been a bit There's better. definitely something going on with production here that, that they're like like why are they all dressed so disparately like first of all eureka is dressed as a british queen and then you have uh ginger minge who's in like some mental little like i don't know like cheerleading outfit like i, I don't thought even know that could have at least like, gone as like some like tacky 80s like cunt, middle-aged country singer look from the yeah from the but 80s. you're really trying to excavate like a meaning for it wasn't like it didn't it wasn't the only person was who was like loud and proud american was kylie yeah like you looked at it and i would have been like, oh that's probably a usa number mm. but like the others were so confusing yeah um also i just thought eureka never really looked like she was having fun like unless because we haven't really seen her lip sync loads maybe that's just her lip stink lip stink do i look like i'm having fun not really no. but she's always given the kind of like serious intenseness and it's like that's not your character like you can't you can't just do that for every song. Like this one song is should be like with a bit of like a cheeky smile. I really felt like they first of all they the whoever produces this is always like trying to tap into the idea that like we need uplifting songs for all the little gay boys and gay girls and gay thems and gay theys sitting in their bedroom. That I don't think anyone's like, going to be bumping this in the club. No, but I think I feel like they all of like America American and um super queen and stuff i don't think they're club tracks i think they're meant to be like uplifting things for people to bump at home but at least at american, you would like if it came on in the club i'd be singing along yeah uh yeah but i feel like they always try and tap in to like uplifting mm. community power anthems and so then i think they just lose me because yeah. it's like especially with ginger uh, much less with kylie and raja but with definitely with eureka and ginger i feel like like they didn't say anything they're just it's just like a tick list it's like a bingo sheet of just yeah, being like 100. right like be yourself like stand true don't let the haters take you down do you know what i mean they're always just like saying these like super sort of just like bullshit um, yeah i thought um, Jin just didn't have any kind of personalized message or no. anything it was just like literally a patriotic song to be honest eureka's didn't really say much no either. And, and she wasted time listing the monarchy in the gray yeah and uh, <laughs> at least do the gay monarchy you know, barbara bet liza and what oh my god what is it the jackman parlin says he's like um oh never mind forget, <laughs> forget about it uh kylie just looked like a pop star judy liza barbara bet these are names we'll never forget thank you <laughs> Um, she is a pop star. She's both she her and Raja turned a look that was like this. I am watching an artist perform. I thought, mm. um, and she. I just thought she looked sublime. I thought again, this will be mirrored in her uh, uh, runway look. She's modern. She's current. She's cutting edge. Like she doesn't. There's nothing about her that's tired. And also, what I find really interesting about her is I don't know whether she would say I. This maybe you've got the answer to. So I don't know whether she would say her drag is. Um, fucking with like gender presentation. So no. I feel like she does that like, actually more out of drag than she like. She's like really like at home with like more a more like gender fuckery presentation. I think. Yeah, she's got a tomboy. In the <laughs> yeah, workroom. and um, but I don't know whether she sees her 
like her drag as like gender presentation or whether she's like i'm just like performing as as the woman i am if that makes sense um but she performs as like she's not getting dressed up as bianca del rio she's getting dressed up as like a young woman that you would see in the club yeah which i love yeah her and raja for 100 percent were like the obvious front runners yeah by this point yeah, because you don't really get that that much because it's like maybe more a little pedestrian sometimes, but you don't really see that because what you more see is like your plastic tiaras and stuff of people that are like going for like, I am a young pop, but it's like very, very over the top. Mm. You know, like I'm 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 the pop bitch. I'm I'm giving you Ariana. Is it giving Arianka? <laughs> is it giving Ariadne? Uh, but it, yeah, I don't know. Like she's, I just feel like she brings a really different. Maybe it's because she's a bit older as well. Maybe. That it doesn't feel like super tweeny and bubble mm. gum. But I mean, obviously I love her. Um, yeah, she looked cool. She looked hot. Most importantly, do not skip over. Did you love the choreo little dosey do moment? I really I like liked that. Yeah. I like the Kylie on the bandana on her butt. I yeah. like the uh, yeah. She just her and Raja both just seem like comfortable on stage. Like they just Raja's rap was so tight. She's got a really good flow at the end, I thought, yeah, not what yeah, you'd yeah. expect. Yeah, it was I just don't know why she's wearing a 2014 hot. Miley Cyrus bangers tour outfit bangers, bangers, rip-off. Bangers. And I know that because I myself have got a very, very bad Alex. You actually Press. have many of them. You, you, you've got that sort of, um, the is it like a baseball outfit one as well from Bangers, the Bangers tour? Do you remember that? Like the red one? Yeah, Chicago Bulls. Yeah. That was never really a stage What's Chicago outfit? Bulls? Basketball. Yeah. Sure. Um, you know I don't keep up with the volleyball, dear. Um so, should we talk about the the runway? Um, have I said everything I wanted to say. Uh, I wish when they all walked forward together, they were walking in sync. Well, <laughs> take that up with Jamal Sims. I just feel like, yeah, that looks messy. And um, was it subliminal messaging when they cut to Kylie saying, "Love is the answer. Love always wins." Because Kylie's and Nick love always wins. <laughs> Um, okay. Yeah, I hope so. Let's talk about the uh, the All Star Extravaganza runway because first up we have. Your- hey, first up, what would you wear? True. Um, I always really struggle with this because I feel like it should be maybe um, the most quintessential outfit that you have that has ever screamed Miss Lucky Luck. But also, you're at the end of the competition. Are you are you going to be able to hold something out that long? That is essentially the best thing that you've brought. Well, I think so, because everything you bring in will be assigned. It's not like you just bring in all your stuff and then you work out what you'll do for it. Everything is for a specific runway or yeah. like mini challenge. Category. I would 100%. Uh, I, I can't tell you what I'd wear, but I can tell you what I'd stay away from. I would 100% stay away from a gown. I would 100% stay away from anything that was like, I wouldn't want to wear like a showstopper outfit. And oh, sorry, so... can I just say as well, Please. rewinding back, that was very, very brave of Kylie to not wear a gown because that's what people expect. For the runway? Sorry, I fast-forwarded. You really that. have fast-forwarded then. It's <laughs> saw the panic in your eyes as you realise that. Um, yeah, I I would go for something that was current and cutting edge. If you think, this isn't really that similar, but if you think about like when Violet wore like the Victor, Victoria look, and she was like, everyone's wearing a dress, so I wore trousers. Mm. I would try and think of something that was a bit more cutting edge than just like, I don't want I don't want my last thing to be pageanty mm. and to be like cookie cutter. And everyone always wears a gown. But interestingly, not that many people wore gowns this time. So that was that was nice. Um what would you wear? Uh well it's hard, isn't it? Because when there's a Toxic category... Britney Spears sparkly <laughs> get so Do you want me to should I answer my own question? I don't know, it'll probably be boring, but you can try. Okay. Well. Ah! Um, yeah, because like if there's a category, you've got something to latch onto. But if it's just like eleganza or extravaganza, mm. it's like the whole world can be anything. What what says ele- What is eleganza to you? Well, weirdly, well, maybe not weirdly, because I often visit it. I went to Disney's Fantasia's The Centaurs. Yeah. And I imagined me, I'd want to be a lovely centaur lady. Mm. Um, so to have like the back and the back legs coming off me. And I was thinking oh, you well, could like have... A full the- like... Like a furry's outfit? No. <laughs> so would it be furry? What would it be like? I don't know. Probably Horse. more like silicone. <gasps> and then you could have like the the legs on wheels, but also they have like little bends in the knees so they move with your knees. And then I would... Oh, see, first of all, I kind of want the hair with the doves on it and then maybe they could just like change positions constantly. But then I would like to be one of the pastel ones. So maybe I'll just be like a medley of all of them and I just am... be so gorgeous and just floating. My flabber is ghasted. I need to see this look immediately. 
Right. If any of you are dab hand at paper mache, you get in touch with us because we need to make this look, make this look a real thing. Um, that would be sensational. I don't really know what I view as ele- like eleganza. For me, that was more of the extravaganza part. Yeah. You you bring the eleganza yourself, don't you? Yes, yeah, it's That's more of just kind of like a, a, a way feeling. of life, yeah. Mm. A sensation. Okay, let's talk about Eureka doing Bob Mackey's Cher Goes to Carnival. First reaction, I was like, wow. I fucking love This that. is an event. However, on closer inspection, I wish the kind of like hip chain bits were just all filled in with the purple material. So it was kind of like a real sharp high waist to low just above the puss um rather than like a kind of dropped waist look um i think though the it was mainly i um, this might not be true but i think it was mainly based on the mackie look that she wore from the moonstruck for the oscars yeah and i actually struck. looked at the image and double checked and she doesn't have low waist with chains it's, she doesn't no. interesting that's what i was going to say i thought maybe it's that they've done a proper repro of it and um that's why I feel like it would work better if like the chains were like real. I keep calling them tra- chains because that's how I assume them would be like sort of jeweled yeah, 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 straps yeah, yeah. or something. But yeah, I didn't like that. But the face was gorgeous. The size of the headdress was insane. The hair was huge. So yeah. it was a real spectacle. A real spectacle. And can I just say as well, like I think it's important to point out that the gays... Not the gays, the gays, the gays. The gays that we look, uh, that we like view, I think that we view larger bodies under is like, realistically, if Aquaria had walked down uh, and and that was on a a rake thin body, you'd absolutely lost your mind. And I think- I don't like a drop waist. I'll say it. I know, but I think think like a, a dropped waist on Aquaria's tiny frame would look completely different. And I think we're so predisposed to view, to, to be critical of, of, like when you're very very thin there's no your body doesn't manipulate the silhouette or the shape in any way it just everything just hangs on you you're like a just like a coat hanger and i think that we are much more hypercritical of how things cut and how things look on larger bodies because barney coming through with these bold new ideas no one's ever thought of (laughs) i just think that uh, basically when i saw it I saw it and I was like, I fucking love it. And then I started like critiquing like every single bit of it and being like, oh, well, actually this, this. And I was like, do you know what? If fucking Miss Fame had come down the runway, I would have been like, gorgeous, 10 out of 10, love it. And it's like, I think that, I don't know, because she pushes the boundaries of like what you expect on larger bodies that then I'm like, well, if she's pushing the boundaries, then I'll really try and read it when it's like, that just wouldn't happen with someone else. And I think that it's like a time that you have to sort of confront your own bias about like, like sort of subconsciously how you view and critique larger bodies that's me personally i'm not saying that's you um, i know it's not me because i would have hated it on especially on fame or queer i think you should know better wow but for uh, me that low waist um but i fucking loved it and i gave it a nine i <laughs> so. gave it eight truffles oh congrats um let's talk ginger minge in the origami i felt like she was trying to give us like a carrie bradshaw moment what in what way i don't know just young flighty fashion girl or something <laughs> Isn't that you, young play no. fashion girl? Um, I thought she looked super cute, all tanned and glowy, though. Love to see this sort of uh, farmer's tan on her. It was definitely better than I expected from her. I just wish that it was a more of a kind of um, elegant updo because the wig was so like thick at the bottom. Like it would be nice if she had a bit of neck. It just all seemed a bit like squished down together. Now remember that I said she looked super cute and tanned and glowy farmer's tan i believe you called it <laughs> because uh the silhouette it just didn't make any sense for me like she's like what like five is she five two i think which is like at that, at that point you're like a registered little person though no? like she's she's absolutely tiny mm. and remember she's got heels on as well like biscuit Cute kickers. heels no yep. she had the diamante stilettos <laughs> Did she? on yeah oh, good for her um but this silhouette for just like for someone that's not only of minuscule size but also like bigger in the middle why would you have a silhouette where it's just like, it goes, she, it was like an empire line, wasn't it? It was just like straight out from the bust and the bust was really big. Then she had the wide hair and then the whole dress was... No, really I big. thought it was just like a circle skirt with just like loads of shit added on it. But then maybe it was just cute in the face, thick in the waist. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, But it just, she was like, oh, it's a classic 1950s housewife silhouette. I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> like, are you seeing something different? I just, I, I really, when she came out, I was like, this doesn't, this doesn't make sense to me at all. I really don't like it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I actually gave this a six. I just. I gave it six point five. I thought this in, this is not a winner's gown, but and also gown. 
Yeah. Uh, let's talk Kylie serving you the pride of the USA. Wow, wow, we wow, bounchika, wow, <laughs> wow, yeah. I bought a tinsel platinum wig as soon as this episode finished. Literally, like, before she'd even <laughs> left the runway, you were on. I was always on the fence, vanity. but <laughs> now seeing it on her, I was like, okay, no, you've sold it for me now. It just, it like. The wig was so gorgeous itself, but then just like when it's catching the light and it's like, mm. is that tinsel? Is that just like the dewy drops of a goddess? Who knows? Yeah. Like, um, this is exactly how an icon dresses. This is like giving me like, this is like iconic to me. I just thought like, like Naomi Campbell would wear that. Yeah. And it's not like, she's like, obviously like, there's no way I'm going to go for the classic ball gown, like whatever. It's modern. It's, it was so sexy. Mm. But also it's giving me like, hints to like RuPaul dressed as Wonder Woman mm. but then also yeah she looks exactly like Wonder Woman but then how sick it is that like also that she's like on the main stage as what what will become our winner she's like redefining like I am a Wonder Woman do you mm. know what I mean like and yeah, as like a trans a, woman she's like I'm, I'm yeah. a Wonder Woman and I love the fact that she didn't wear a gown because that's just so is what is expected and yeah 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 you might even think you'd be penalised for not but she was just like no I am a modern cool fucking bitch chick <laughs> um, yeah, I gave it obviously a 10. 10 out of 10, honey. I gave it a 9. A 9? Yeah. Why not a 10? I don't know, because I didn't scream the house down, boots, yes, God, mama. Please don't. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Raja D. O'Hara. And now the- this, sorry. Go on. This was the the biggest gasp of the night for me. Why? Her body in that dress, I, I mean, just like couldn't cope with it. This the cinch, the leg, you purple velvet royalty. Mm. Um, she just looks so beautiful. But can I be honest? There was something about the bust detail that was a bit confusing to me. It looked, it looked. I thought it looked a bit unfinished. Oh, you think just just ugh, the thing that was distracting me was the, the shine on her forehead. Yeah, I just wish there was like a bang or. I don't know. I don't want to speak on the hairstyle too much. I couldn't really see what it was, but I just know I needed less shine on the forehead. I wish Rihanna had come back and taken her forehead back, to be honest. Mm. Do you know what it was? I think she had done a really gorgeous, like very matte sort of 90s supermodel beat. And I think her hair, I think maybe she used her, what is her boy hair? Could she maybe have blown it back? She's got it kind of like in a sort of crowny. So it couldn't have been her boy hair? No. Okay. But I think she just had, I think she had on a dark brown or black lace front and it was just so slick to the head that it was just, she'd blended it in with her contour well Mm. and it was just like, it just went straight back into that sort of high pony. And it's just hard to tell where, where the boundary Mm. was. She was really giving me that Diana Ross, beautiful, gorgeous energy that we got at the Super Bowl as well. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Uh, I mean, and let's say it, she invented purple. She did. She did. I'm sorry, Thank Prince. God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm I, sorry, Chan. <laughs> I mean, are you? She well, I feel bad for her. I mean, hers is lilac, but she really has been on two seasons of Drag Race, only wearing lilac basically. And then Rue's like, "Hey, Raja, look at you inventing purple." Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, and I gave this a nine. I thought it was. I, I gave this nine point five. I thought it was great. So you gave this more than Kylie, just because the initial reaction, I I got the body. Mm. Yeah. Absolutely loved it. So can I ask you now, for the final time this season, <gasps> what was your zinger and what was your minger? Zinger. My zinger was, of course, Kylie's glitter Kylie's wig. Kylie's pleased, blonde, teased out Pammy. Uh, uh, gorgeous. And is that exactly what we're going to do to yours? Oh, uh, she had a weird kind of like, f- was that front parting? I would want like quite a deep side parting with a deep side. big old fringe. Yeah. Uh, can I ask what your minger is? My minger is that Ginger's one. It was just so very, like, bottom heavy. Yeah. And it also, like, it didn't have a very defined sort of wave to it. It was, like, quite, almost looked like it had been a bit beaten up. Mm. Uh, mine was RuPaul's Mound of Worms. He was wearing <laughs> on his head. I just, I'm sorry. I couldn't, I could not get into that. Um, and then we head into the critiques. Le critique. Uh, Eureka's speech was fantastic. Literally. The four, next four words written down. Eureka's speech was fantastic. She just really <laughs> cemented why she deserved to come back. If not just to give us that sweet outfit moment in the purple. But like when she was talking, I was like, she knows how to play this motherfucking game. Humble yet confident. Yeah. And just as well, like she, I like as well as one point that she said when she was talking about her size, she was like, I don't mean to go on about my size, mm. but like, it's really fucking like groundbreaking that I'm here. And even that sort of like level of like, uh, like understanding that she's like I know that like maybe I do talk about it a bit but it is like remember how important it is that Mm -hmm. I'm here and I'm breaking down these uh notions of what it is to be a big queen I just thought 
I'm... And to say all that good, deep stuff. Good, and, deep stuff. Yeah. Um, but then just to end on a joke as well. It's like, and such a it's stupid not that deep. joke. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Um, when Ginger repeated, she is one of the biggest stars, <laughs> it just doesn't get any easier hearing it. <laughs> I thought, just go outside and touch some grass. It's not that deep. One of the biggest stars. No. You need to touch of reality, honey. Um, Isn't it nice to see Michelle's country accent really um, coming out of its shell this it, week? It, well, well, you know, it's if your country, she's lived, she yeah. actually grew up in Arkansas. Um, my favourite was when, uh, how much Kylie humbled Michelle Visage. You know Michelle Visage, she really speaks with the weight of the full queer community on her. As as the only as the only cis woman that was ever been allowed on ground on grinder. She really speaks from the ancestors of the queer community. Um and she said something to Kylie and Kylie went, Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she ain't chicken for you, bitch, she ain't chicken for you. And then I guess we head into the lip sync, Luke's. But do you know what we do be before? We get to see Shay, Shay in her AI X Machina glam oh. for her new single Collide, which is out now on all streaming platforms. Um, and it's feet uh, our good girl Mickey Blanco. Cute. Isn't that a nice crossover? My soulmate. Yeah. Shay, Shay is. And my soulmate Mickey Blanco. Yeah. Um, I thought they looked great. Um, I was very glad they didn't do the thing that they did on All Stars Four. I think it was when they. Let Naomi get all dressed up in another look just to say, oh, sorry, babe, you didn't make top three. Do you want to just take a seat with like no fanfare, no, no. congrats for getting this I think far. that's partly because it was it would have been Eureka and they've like just brought her back and she's won. Mm. So I think they were like, they might as well all just lip sync, do you know what I mean? It yeah. works. Um, but when they said that they were all going to lip sync, I was like, get me off. I do not want to ride anymore. Get me off this motherfucking <laughs> no, train. More lip syncs. Yeah, because um, I thought it was just going to be a 4G. Just all of them just go in absolutely fucking ham hock i still um, get flashbacks to the like sort of how many was it like six seven oh, girls on the God. stage at once and that was um what's her name honey davenport throwing it yeah throwing it down back and forth <laughs> um thank fuck it was separate though uh would you kill a stupid love lip sync i kind of think so because it's got lots of different moments in it i just can i be honest i don't really I'm I, like I fan of the art, fan of the visuals. We've spoken about this before. Like Gaga, never done. What does she say? Never been seen before. Never been done. Blah 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 blah. She's fantastic, but she's just not someone that I listen to at all. No, and I don't really know that much about her. Um, and I I feel like but it's not an impersonation. I know, but I feel like the connection that some queens have to that is like what makes them do a fantastic lip sync. And I'm just like, yeah, it was fun. I like the beat. Like I just, it wasn't like. I feel like I couldn't connect to it and be like, oh, like in the way that the gays TM do. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's what we'd be lacking. The mm-hmm. thing that the people are like, uh, Stephanie Germanotta saved my life. Yeah. That, but I feel like you could probably go fucking hard on this. I just, I... Yeah, I just feel like it's got all the different little like freak out, freak out bit. And then like, yeah, there's kind of like, it's not just like one level. You can kind of, you can afford to do like a funny bit and then like a dancey yeah. bit and then a sexy bit. So, whose lip sync did you love? Kylie Sunit Love. Her in that fucking B colour look. Oh my god, she looked like an Alexandra Vothier like quality street. A who? Alexandra Vothier. He's the <laughs> one that does all them. You know that gorgeous um like purpley dress that Dua Lipa wore that I was obsessed with. That that metallic one. Kind he just does of loads of like really gorgeous jellyfish vibes. Yeah, he does loads of. No, you're thinking of the Versace uh, one that she wore to the Met Gala with the big. Uh, sure priscilla hair um she just he just d- d- uses a lot sort of like uh like sort of metallic crepe a mm. lot like in like jewel tones and stuff um but it was just fucking gorgeous it seemed like it was a two horse race though like it was only oh, yeah, Raja yeah, 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 for sure. they just i know i said it before but just like the way they move especially raza actually the way she moves across the stage is like she owns this thing. she's not scared yeah. of Anything she'll like, she, yeah, she just, she's all it's like, over it's, it. What I love in a lip sync is when you watch someone and it looks like they are performing and singing. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, I so often you'll see there's such a disconnect between the performer that they're like, they don't have the, the weight and the gravitas of this song. So they are lip syncing. But it's where, real special when you see, especially someone like Raja, when it's like, you could like blink and it's it's raja performing her song yeah Do you know what i mean yeah they're like not scared to give like just a real woman being sexy thoughts on ginger's aliexpress leotard for the finale of all stars <laughs> i mean maybe millie bobby brown was right you're boring 
I just feel like the things Ginger does, and maybe this is just because we've been burned by her this season, but like the things, the little details she does, like that's made for a smaller audience. Like you need to be, the kind of moves you're doing aren't going to sit well in a massive stadium. Yeah, but I feel like she's not got the energy in her to be like, I'm performing Mm. at the O2. She's very kind of like, come up and look me in the eye sometime. Sure. But was it fashion? No. <laughs> I think my my always like, go-to with this is one of, for me, the most magnetic, like, inspiring lip syncers of, from the Drag Race uh, franchise, obviously, is Sasha. You will never catch Sasha doing the Ellie Diamond 8 count. You will never catch her doing, like, you know that move that I hate that everyone does? The cracker move. Yeah, like, there is, like, a certain sort of, like, 8, drag queen moves that when people are bored and there's like a lift in the song they're like this is what i'll do Mm. so that the audience this as well yeah um and you will never catch you rarely unless she's doing like a choreograph number and there are some fucking sick numbers that she's done because she's got some she she moves so well sash yeah like there's a, a number that she does at nightgowns to um do 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 the La Tigre song. Every day and night. And it, she's got like her her boyfriend, Johnny Velour, and someone else. And they're like, it's like a full like sort of like girl band number. Mm. Um, and it's just so sick. But she never ever gets up on the stage and does like choreo or weird shit like that. And she is someone that like harnesses the power of like, she's strong and still, but she moves and every single move that she does when she lip syncs has intention. And she just proves to me over and over again that like, you don't even really need to move to lip sync well. If you've got, if you understand what you're doing and you've got like stagecraft, she sometimes just stands in the middle of the stage and is like the most incredible lip syncer that you've ever seen. Mm. And so like, I don't equate good lip syncing with dancing or like doing the most or jumping into splits or whatever. So I just don't, I don't, I don't need that from them ever. And I feel like so many people rely on it that quite often if I see it at the beginning, I just switch off. Yeah. I'm like, I know what I'm going to get here. Um, and Kylie Sonic Love, she can dance so well. She can give you everything, but she doesn't. Notice how she didn't, for that last lip sync, do her backflips, mm. do her like splits and stuff. Like she was just giving you well, until she really do shit in the uh, like ankle length wiggle dress. Congratulations on wearing that on the lip sync. Until the momentous slip into a forward roll. Now that's some motherfucking showgirl shit. Thank you. That is how you style it out. Just the stress of that and then the payoff oh. was so good. And what about her sitting on that coat like a prize kitty? Oh. I love it when they do that so much. Mm. Um, I actually felt sick watching this because I was like, I need her to win so much. Like, it was just so intense, no? Like, did you feel like she was going to win? Uh, I don't know. I was still always just scared that Ginger might come and <sighs> take it. Uh, but she's doing, Ginger was doing a thing that um, Scarlet does that I don't like. I can't really describe it, but it's just always kind of like doing those like puppy dog, like forlorn eyes. Like you're trying to give intensity, but like not every song is intense like that. And not even every song is intense all the way through like know, that. You, you can't just what, rely on that. Do you know what it feels like watching you do it? It feels like they want to give, you know, if you see like Shay or someone give like actual like, feeling when they're like this is this is tough this is painful it feels like they're they want to do that but they're doing like a pantomime version of it yeah do you know what i mean like rather than like i'm feeling like the intense emotional uh experience here as i'm lip syncing they like don't really have she hasn't really got the range darling mm-hmm. she hasn't got the depth for it so she's giving you sort of a disney version of it yeah that's basically her whole problem with the pink table talk on Skulls. Well, exactly. Do you feel like the studio crownings feel so anticlimactic? Yeah, rubbish. They, well, because they filmed all the endings, haven't they? Mm. So it's just like it never really feels like a moment. But the moment was our baby Kylie Sneak Love is Woo! the first trans woman winner of Drag Race. Do you think Rue did it to say, okay, everyone, you can stop calling me transphobe now? No. Well, I mean, who fucking knows with that psychopath? But it like it uh, it felt so justified. Hers was the best mm. lip sync. I loved her look the most. Like she has been I know she I did see that like she actually hasn't won the most amount of challenges, 
But what I will say is that the judging of this season has been absolutely fucking abomin- abominable. Mm. Um, I say the the screams of joy that were let out really made up for the ones that were stifled when we thought Bimini was going to win and she didn't. Oh my God, yeah. Different screams were let out. But oh. I really felt like now I got to live my blonde trans icon winner moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally. I just, um, it, it, I wanted it so badly for her, but I just, you just never know with Drag Race. Mm. Um, but I would have really lost my mind if Ginger had won. <laughs> when Sorry, I've got to let it go. Yeah, no. Uh, when she was just standing there with her eyes closed, just like taking it all in, she looks so gorgeous. I mean, she just is, isn't she? Yeah, she's got real, not that I've even seen it, but real like Evita kind of beautiful Evita. strength. Evita? Do you see Evita <laughs> as Madonna though? I've not seen it, so. Over her arm. Um, I, I see it. I just like a very, I think you mean like a very sort of regal elegance. Mm, it's gorgeous. Um, it's mad when you think that they filmed it four times. Like, Do you think everyone's acting is still as good by the last... Run. Well, maybe they filmed a couple of ties too. Who mm. knows? I hope not. I hope they give give up on that. Yeah, I unless was not it's two of our faves. Uh, unless it's two of our faves, then I'm fine with it. Do you know what I mean? If it was, if it had been a taste bimini, um, that would have been cute. tie. That would have been very cute. Um, but we do demand winners from here on out. I'm sorry. Um, so for the last time, should we talk these? I know. I just 100 percent know that these are going to be so basic because mine is so <laughs> yeah basic. Let's talk rose and thorn. What was your rose? The recovery from the trip. A okay. charge of force. Okay, okay. I mean, you've got to know what my rose is. Kylie won! Yeah, just like, uh, just the, um, I've seen so many huge news things report on this. It's like RuPaul's Drag Race has crowned its first, uh, like, female trans um, star. Like, it's it's so newsworthy. It's such a huge thing. And especially after the fucking, like, when you think about people like Bitter Betty and stuff that just literally for years have been like, let fucking women on the show. Mm. Like, let, like, people that are like figureheads of the drag community um, who just want to feel the vindication of being like allowed on this platform. Vindication? Vindication, is that another right word? But if, if you vindicate someone, it's like a negative thing. Oh, I thought it was like, if like you're accused. vindicated, I thought it was like validated. Is that what I mean? Like Maybe. the validation, sorry. I thought vindicated, like, oh, I feel vindicated that, like, finally what I've been fighting for has come to fruition. I mean, you're the wordy one out of the two. I'm, of us. Who's wordy? No, I'm just, sh- I'm talking shit. <laughs> They've been listening to me for an hour and a half, just like, what is this faggot talking about? What was your um, thorn? But sorry, can I just say, just it's, it's rather than her just winning, it's that the possibility that this opens up now that it's like, you've got your first trans winner. Like, you obviously in UK as well, like, we're embracing, like, all forms of drag but it just they really have opened the gate now that they can't turn down anyone mm. i mean i will be <laughs> fucking like they just can't like it's just that it would make absolutely zero sense so what you reckon we, drag kings coming to a drag so. race near you so. fucking hope so what we haven't seen though yet which i we we kind of did see with got mick what we haven't had yet is a um female trans woman that hasn't been on the show before just coming through mm so like obviously everyone like your Gia's, your Jigglies, um, your Kylie's, everyone, they have been on the show previously, and some presenting male. Um, so I'd like I can't wait until we see the next run that has just got like trans women, like maybe a couple of gals from the Colby fam. Oh, oh imagine like do you know what I mean? I just want to see um, I just want to see that. Mm. Um, but yeah, just opening the possibilities. What was your thought? Uh, that Trini can't be there. <laughs> oh yeah and then uh, as basic as it is my thorn was just how much fun doing all stars would be and how quickly it's gone and that we're not doing all stars no more no. i'm actually quite sad that we uh it's all over and done i'm not sure if i believe you really yeah. why just i'm a known liar no liar nasty. uh hate everyone nasty don't like spending time <laughs> with you don't like talking um no i am genuinely like i was just like when I was watching it then, I was like, oh, All Stars is over. Just because you feel like with All Stars that they're your, they're your mates mm. competing, aren't they? So it's just like, oh, All Stars done. But what that does mean is that we get a fucking break, finally. Well, exactly. Finally. And we can look at that list just to on the wall here and try and do some of the 100 million tasks that we need to do. <laughs> On that note, I guess we'll be our B until... I guess we are until you'll see us come back in. Now, they say that uh, I think it was end of October. They think is going to be the okay the premiere. So I think you'll see us back in October. 
Well, we'll be uh, screaming along with season three of UK Drag Race. Um, and if you haven't caught up last week, we did a little Meet the Queens look. Look at all of them. 